Another good weekend for property in Australia. Has it returned? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm having a very relaxing Sunday, I've got my stein of coffee and I'm trying not to have a midday nap. It's, it's uh, one of those days today, I don't know what it is. Those Sunday afternoon naps are looking really appealing. Maybe I'm just getting older, guys. I thought we'd have a look at this this article from ABC News about the property market. You know, it has a spring in its step. And is this the rebound everyone's talking about? Good times are back, good times are back. But before we even get into this, I need to ask, what is driving this? What is driving this? Is there any external demand that is you know, driving up this populate this property price increase or this slight increase, or or is it is it a dead cat bounce? A dead cat bounce. Now this is a trading term that some people may not be aware of. And I just did a Google image search. We I mean, have a look here. Dead cat dead cat bounce chart. No, I'm covering up the chart, but you know, price reacts to news and swiftly moves along trend. So here we go. And two, the dead cat bounce. Okay, here where it bounces up and retract uh, a retracement or retractment, retracement would retract, goes up again 50% or down depending on what's happening. And then a further movement in the direction of the original trend. Okay, so could this be what's happening? Because you have to remember any of these markets are all manipulated by the news, it's manipulated by the psychology, it's what people are thinking. When we're getting surveys where 82% of people are thinking there's a recession coming to Australia, where anyone you talk in any industry thinks a recession is coming, you know, why is the property market jumping back up again? Could it be people are trying to, are quickly selling their apartments and jumping into housing just so they're scared? Maybe, maybe. So let's have a look at this article. Property market has a spring in its step, but a rebound is not yet in the bag. The tentative shoots of the housing sector's recovery have continued to emerge. Another solid Saturday of auction results has fired up optimism that what has been, historically speaking, a fairly minor correction might be over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you reckon, guys? Let me know in the comments. Do you think? Do you think it's a dead cat bounce or do you think, you know, we've bottomed out and the good times are coming back? But then if you think good times are coming back, what is driving that return? Could explain it to me, please. Let me know what do you think is driving that return. In Sydney, preliminary clearance clearances look like hitting 75%. Melbourne was close to 80%. Okay, this is to do with the clearance rates. And I haven't looked at the figures this, this weekend. Uh, I'll look at that later. But it, it's irrelevant if the number of products on the market are lower than normal. You know, oh, wow, we've only, you know, we've got... Well, Tasmania gets 100% sometimes, but they have one property in auction, all the rest are private sales. So, and then the week after, oh no, clearance rates are down 50% in Tasmania, but your number's now two houses. So it's, it's crazy. It, it just, it feels like spin. Am I the only one seeing spin here? So if that is the worst of it, things haven't been too bad. Sure, Sydney house prices fell 15% from their peak to what, uh, I'm moving over here, to what appears to be the market's bottom around May or June. Melbourne's, Melbourne top to bottom looks like being a bit more than 10%, which was about average across capital cities. Perth with a 20% slump so far and Darwin down 30% have been the painful significant outliers. The August house price bounce was particularly vigorous, up 1% nationally. Yes, but how much of that was driven by Sydney and Melbourne? Current clearance rates running at around 70% point to further gains. Although there's the caveat, a record low number of homes up for sale is dragging down the supply bit of the supply demand dynamic. Yes, exactly. So that, that I, people ask me why I'm focusing on clearance rates or talking about it. It's because the media talks about clearance rates like it's an indicator. That's the thing. If supply is down, they never mention that. Clearance rates are high, but supply is the lowest it's been in such and such a period. Head of property consultants, SQM Research, Lewis Christopher, said while clearance rates remain strong, they are still down a bit on last year. Okay, so even with, with low supply and strong clearance rates, we're still lower than last year. So, yeah, 
that that's a sign that the boom's back isn't it and that's facetious by the way normally clearance rates tend to fall due to the seasonal rises in volume mr christopher tweeted at the close of business certainly more buyers out there but are the banks handling the increased loan applications i'm hearing the banks are struggling with the result being many loan approvals are only just making settlement day and sometimes going over at no fault of the buyer. But will a springtime rebound be enough to sustain a broader economic recovery? There's, certain, there's certainly a hopeful sign, but a lot will need to go right. I'm not sure. I mean, we've got a lot of stock coming online, particularly with apartment stock, and we have a tremendous lack of confidence. You've got the fire cladding issue. You've got Opal Tower, you've got Mascot Tower, you've got the whole triangle of fail in Sydney. You've got all the issues in Melbourne. You've got the issues here in Queensland. Now we're hearing talk about fire rating issues. So I did a video on that yesterday between in buildings. Does that fill anyone of confidence? So house prices peak to June 2019. I mean, here you go, Darwin down 30%. Sydney down, everyone down. But yeah well if you can accurately predict the bottom and the peak so low auction volumes supporting prices there you go that's the, that's the whole reason why it is beneath the headline of house price stabilizing and even edging up are many of the same old problems tight credit high household debt and a big backlog of soon to be completed apartments that is about to be dumped on a still wobbly market yeah that's that's the thing right there let's the, talk to anyone who's been in the development game is trying to push stock some people i've been hearing people discuss issues months ago years ago even with this so it's not yeah it's not screaming hectic guys it is not at all if something puts a solid base under a house recovery and therefore broader economic recovery it probably needs to be more money in the punters pockets ideally it will be through higher wages lower taxes or even lower borrowing costs rather than heavier doses of debt well okay how are we going to get higher wages there needs to be high demand for for employees there needs to be greater competition in that sector for your employees and that drives up wages all minimum wage does all government intervention does it sets an artificial um, level where people below that skill set of earning capacity are unemployed so you have an inherent level of unemployment and then you need to have an inherent level of taxation to support those people which, frankly, I, I, you can't do one without the other, guys. You can't have your minimum wage without having your welfare. And there's going to be some people that just sit on it because they don't have the capacity to earn or be useful enough to earn money. Uh, lower taxes. Okay, we've had that. I, I still would argue looking at allowing people to write off the interest payments on their primary residence. And that's not a handout from taxpayers. That's letting people who earn money pay for a house for their family before they pay the government to piss away the money on some potato mafioso in Western Australia managing potatoes. Okay? That's what it is. Just think about that. You have to pay the government before you pay to have a house for your family. Does that seem fair? Don't worry, comrade. It'll all be right. We all live in the, you know, in the cardboard boxes together. The rise in Sydney and Melbourne prices reflect an improvement in demand for home buyers, but as Morgan Stanley Chris Reed said, it's been amplified by slim pickings under the hammer. Mr. Reed argues while sale volumes are likely to increase, structural headwinds such as lower investor activity means any pickup is likely to be gradual or it'll reduce the cost because there's more competition, more stock on the market. Below the surface, uh, challenges remain. Linked to volume, mix, credit, and demand, he said. Near-term prices may stay supported, but we still expect sustained recovery to be linked to fiscal policy, not real, not re-leverage. Stronger price and clearance signals are likely to persist in the near term, although the transmission to the broader housing market and economy will be lower than in the past. The big question is whether the recovery is strong enough to be sustained and not thwarted again by higher prices and more properties coming onto the market. So here you go, here's auction clearance rates, the volume. There we go, look at that. Look at that. I'll, I'll get it, capture a copy of this. So here's our clearance rates and look at the volume there. Okay, it's impressive when you've got 
you know, volume at this level, right up here, and a higher clearance rate. But look at this. So we've got a high clearance rate with a very low volume. So credit is key. Westpac's economy, uh, economics team has a relatively positive view on things, arguing the market will likely put on almost 15% from its June low to the end of 2020. However, the bank says it will come down to lending, which is not surprising given the Sydney and Melbourne corrections were in lockstep with a 15% fall in new loans over the second half of last year. Credit has remained tight for most of this year, but June and July saw an 8% spurt in home loans. Investor loans rose 5% in July alone, but still remain 20% down over the previous over the year. Banks are likely addressing the issue in the aftermath of the Royal Commission and adopting a more commercial approach to lending, Westpac said. A turnaround in lending will be necessary to sustain the current boost to prices and the likely increase in activity will, will follow. A flood of new high-rise apartments heading for the market is not the thought of thing to fire up prices, but Westpac argues the impact is unlikely to spread across all residential property. Although we expect upward pressure on existing dwelling prices, the oversupply and building quality concerns are likely to weigh on the prices of new apartment developments as they come to market, creating a two-tier market, the bank noted. So, trough will rebound. Well, yes. Well, I don't know. They're more optimistic than I am. Maybe I'm just too old and cynical. Or I can't see what's pushing it. I, I, can't, I can't see it. Maybe just the industry I'm in and the people I'm talking to. That could be what it is. Or, you know, that I'm doing YouTube and, and looking at these things every other day. <laughs> that could that be why my, my beard's getting greyer by the minute? Morgan Stanley's Mr. Reed said housing credit remained a significant weakness. Remaining a significant weakness is one thing, but the construct, construction side of the housing cycle continued to roll over is another. And it has an even more important impact on the real economy. Rising house prices, increasing household net worth, and therefore spending, the wealth effect, and increased uh, property turnover drive spending in homeware and uh, hardware stores. Falling construction activity is a big negative. Well, yes, and it is. Construction activity is falling. We saw recently ended a video and um, where it was, you know, jobs are crashing in the construction sector. So here we have people talking about a potential rebound in the property sector. We've got a whole lot of product coming back onto market, which hasn't come on. We've got, and they've cut interest rates how many times in, in, in living memory to achieve this. They've eased up significantly on the lending requirements. You used to be able to pay your loan back at 7%, now it's like 2.5%. And all of that they've thrown at it. They've got two tiny increases in property and that's with a very low supply. Am I only one? I can't be the only one thinking this is just not all making sense. It feels like this is spin. It feels like this is spin. So thumbs up and let me know if you think it's spin or give me a counter argument. Okay, because yeah. And this is why when people are making claims, it'll go up 15% in that period. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, fundamentals, how can you claim that? What's going to drive that 15%? Are you predicting there's going to be a population increase in that period? Is there going to be sudden infrastructure spending in an area that will drive that up? What what's, what's causing that demand for those properties to go up? So as it continues to decline, this will affect household jobs growth and therefore income and spending, Mr. Reid said. Economic growth in Australia remained very low at 1.4% over the year, and we expect... Uh, it only to uh, we only expect a gradual recovery from here let's have a look let's just jump here to trading economics one of my favorite websites at the moment let's have a look at the unemployment rate here in australia the unemployment rate because there's just something i'd like to i'd like to discuss so here we're sitting at 5.3 and i know i prefer the roy morgan data guys and i'm sure a lot of others do but let's have a look at um we'll go max Okay, we'll have a look here back in the 90s. Unemployment was say around 6%. And then look how it shot up when we had a recession. Look how quick that jumped up. Look at that climb. Okay, 2008, you know, 
Okay, okay. Boom. Look at that jump. Back in the 80s. Look at that jump. So here's the thing. You can get delta change in your unemployment figures real quick. Real quick. When people start cutting, they start cutting stuff fast. So, you know, it happens gradually and then boom, super fast. So this is a challenging environment for housing demand, particularly because we expect the decline in construction activity to affect the labor market and increase unemployment. The Morgan Stanley view is the market is still in a trough and not a rebound. Yeah, well, I'd agree with that. Another interest rate cut or two might help at the margins, but that's about all. Do you think? Yeah. It's difficult to envisage a rebound without an improvement in credit supply, which needs both an increase in loan approvals and an easing in lending standards. We don't expect either of these to change substantially. So trade worries hit the market. A promising end to the week on Wall Street was cut short by a team of Chinese trade negotiators changing its travel plans on Friday, deciding to skip a visit to the US boondocks of Montana and Nebraska to meet farmers. Apparently, there was enough to A, annoy President Trump, and B, see the S&P 500 reverse early gains. By the end of the day, it was down 0.5% and down about the same for the week. So this just shows you how finicky the market is at the moment, particularly in America. How the stock market is just responding to things like this so drastically. Our market didn't seem overly alarmed by the farmer snub and is priced for a fairly flat opening, having gained around 1% for the week. Oil was also was the dominant global market shaper, but by then at the end of the week, it shaped up as a flash in the pan, so to speak. Well, yes, there you go. Following Monday's 20% spike in the wake of wake of the weekend attack on the Abik oil processing facility, I know I butchered that, which temporarily halved Saudi production and cut global supplies by 5%, the market regained its composure. The Saudis said by working around the clock, um, full output will be restored by the end of the month. The global Brent benchmark ended the week gaining 7%, while the impact on the US crude was even weaker. However, prices are unlikely to come down a lot more as traders appear to be alert to the idea that oil production Gulf states look a risky bet at the moment, as they have been for a while, and are now adding a fear premium to pricing. So RBA rate cuts or shorten. Locally, unemployment uh, grinding high with a significant driver in sentiment. The better outlook for an October Reserve Bank rate cut flipped from a long odds to a pretty short uh, priced favorite overnight. So there you go. So it, can, let me know, guys. Can you actually bet on the odds of the RBA doing a rate cut? We'll do. Not that I uh, am encouraging gambling. I'm just interested if you could, if the tab would take it. I wonder if they would. They probably would. They'd let you bet on anything. So that saw the Australian dollar slip below 68 US cents. While a weaker Australian dollar is no doubt welcome development for the RBA. It may only be temporary if a cut isn't delivered. The general easing by central banks across the planet, led by the US and Europe, a shout out to the contrarian Norway where rates went up last week, is also putting the RBA under pressure. As Governor Philip Lowe loaded last month, he and his Martin Place sidekicks are monitoring global peers very closely. If we were to maintain our interest rate in the face of a decline in the global rate, our exchange rate would appreciate likely moving us away from our goals for inflation unemployment. So we have to move to, and this has been a consideration in recent thinking on interest rates, he noted. It's a theme that Dr. Lowe may well expound upon in his economic update speech to the Armadale Business Chamber on Tuesday evening. It will be the highlight of an otherwise data light week. So there we go. What do you all think, guys? Do you think it's gonna you know, are we in a trough or is it going to rebound or to all the pieces? Just it's not screaming. It is not screaming property rebound. It's screaming. Everything has been thrown at the at the sector. And because we've got a shortage of supply, clearance rates seem artificially high. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.